that's not discipline people. No, let's get it. <laughs> so we we already know that we can't have any kind of the conversation before we start doing our work. Okay, y'all. So <laughs> today, um, women of the stars, we're hanging out with Terry. It's Terry Tuesday. We're gonna do our Terry Tuesday meditation. It's rolling up to be towards, you know, the new year. And we just have some thoughts. Like we just had this beautiful conversation and uh, we're just thinking about transition and we're having family members transition and friends transition, but we are also having relationships transition. And of course the end of the year is coming. So we are having to let this year go and start a whole new year. And it's just filled with change. And maybe I would say since 2020, change is approaching us so much faster than before. And uh, things are a little more abrupt, but I guess it's only when we're not prepared for expecting change, you know? Cause we, we get so used to holding on two things like we, we want our institutions to stay the same we want our government to stay the same or we don't um we just but we don't know really what to expect when the change comes and um i thought it was important that we acknowledge that the changes the transitions especially with our family members flying off to another plane and even us changing planes as we're sitting here right now, you know, during ascension process, right? We're constantly releasing and letting things go. And Terry and Jonathan, I was just gonna open the floor for you to discuss these things. I know you also mentioned Mercury retrograde as well that was approaching on the 29th. So I'll open the floor for you all to talk. Well, I, I think it's important that we realize that um, the year, as this year is closing, we have all seen so many um, changes in our own personal lives, in our relationships with people. And having lost family members, you know, like people are leaving this plane um, and, and it's not it's not a bad thing because they have lived their life. And so they're preparing on the other side to come back into a new energy, right? Um, but we're here now, like, how do we navigate through all of this stuff? And, and, you know, our relationships have changed with our family, with our friends, with the groups that we've been part of. And, and it's important for us to be able to release that with grace and, open up to, um, to the ability to discern um, where, it, where we fit in, not necessarily what other people are saying. It's like connecting again to our heart and connecting to our soul and what it is that we are here to accomplish on our soul's behalf. Um, so, you know, we're, we're just going to go through a couple of things that can help you to release some of these old energies so that we can make room for the new. And sometimes the new is not, we, we don't know what that is, but we create the path as we walk through it. So, um, and, and I, I'm gonna share a dream I had. Was, was that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I had a dream a while ago and I dreamt that I was crossing a bridge and I was on a road. And then when I got to the other side of the bridge, there was nothing there. It was empty. And so it was like, um, where am I supposed to go? And I thought, well, I can go back and go back on the other road. But then my guidance was saying, no, how do you know that that old road is going to be there? So the guidance I got was just keep going and you create your own path and you will get to where you need to go. Just trust each step forward. 
And that means being in the now. It doesn't mean projecting to the future. The past is no longer relevant because we don't know that it's there. So the only place we have is just to keep moving forward and we will be given the direction by our higher, by our higher selves. Jonathan, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's literally, you know, trusting. And the important thing is to allow yourself to feel what is you're being engaged in as things are moving and, and as you're letting go and you know having empathy and forgiveness you know for yourself and other parties um and, and having that compassion uh and just you know we feel that sometimes uh we have to well there's a lot of distractions or things that will allow us to yeah not to be able to or engage that right um, and there's, there's another element of bringing your mindfulness into it, right? And in the present moment, you know, grace is the giving season or it's the season for gifting. This is a gift, this is the present, right? So that's, that's a, you know, large part in, of allowing us to feel, to expect, to, to release these into, uh, you know, on it and letting go, you know, and celebrating those others for for having the experience that you had with them and and you know, accepting and then letting go. Yeah, em embracing the changes and mm -hmm. and the joy, right? Mm -hmm. like right. No, what I wanted to say about that is the fact that I try to focus on what brings me joy and what brings me happiness. And what I tend to do is kind of suppress anything else that's going to make me unhappy. I kind of want to put it on a back shelf and put it on a back burner. And, and I don't want to really necessarily deal with that. I want to keep focusing on the things that are bringing me joy, but I'm feeling, you know, and it's being pointed out to me that I need to actually acknowledge the pain parts, the parts that hurt, you know, so that they don't get buried and later become something bigger later on. I know that the whole process of releasing, I enjoy, I enjoy setting things on fire, moving things out, bringing new things in. And I embrace the fire aspect but now it's time to embrace the honoring aspect. And so as I hear about, you know, the transitions that you're going through and people leaving you and, and moving forward, I have my own thoughts. Like we know no one truly dies. Their spirit moves to a different place. So I have a way of maybe minimizing or justifying the change that it's like maybe interpreted as no big deal they're not gonna you know like they're moving on and haha -ha, like this is the silver lining part but where's the part about the honoring part and I don't necessarily know how to hold that space sometimes. Mm. So in the past, when I've had people have deaths in the family or things around me, I was never really raised to be able to be in the position to comfort another person during that time. And I know we had that conversation, Terry, because you said that you actually are gifted at that. That's something that you're able to do. For some of us, we're in the space of, oh, uncomfortable topic do you bring it up but I have learned that I can be in your space and allow you to experience grief without trying to cheer you up and make you happy mm -hmm. for myself I've moved myself into a different place of putting it on the back shelf but I am able to be in your space and acknowledge your pain and allow you to be in pain and and go through your grieving process 
and I don't know if you had something to say about that, but I'm just saying this is why today that was important to me because I, I heard some things that both of you said and I did not want to not make room for that. And, and, and part of, you know, we grieve, we grieve in, in so many different levels. Of course, we grieve for the, the people that have transition, but we grieve for relationships. We grieve for um, our loss of, of freedoms. We, we grieve for all of these things. And it's important to acknowledge it, but not dig your hole deeper and get pulled into it. It's, it is just, it's, it's, this too will change. The energies that are always shifting, they're moving, they're moving. But if we get stuck in one place, that's not healthy for us either. It's like, there's that flow, you know, we're flowing along a stream and we can hold on to the side of a bank, but eventually we're going to get uprooted from that. And then we're going to go somewhere else. So we have to be, we have to allow ourselves to feel and, and, but also allow ourselves to flow because there's always changes coming and we can't hold on to the past. And, and we don't want to create our future based on the past. We want to be able to let that go so that there's new vistas that open up for us. And so, you know, the people that have transitioned, they're already opening up to a new vista, right? And, and so these are opportunities for us to um, integrate integrate parts of our shadow, right? That the shadow is caught into these places. And so when we go through that grieving process, it's, it's an opportunity for us to integrate and, and acknowledge what has got us stuck. Um, so you, you have that awareness that you have control over how you feel. And, you know, when we take that power back of who we are, then it, it gives us a sense of being a creator again and not being caught into other scenarios. We create our ability to find joy in our life. Right, but that means that means that we also acknowledge where we've come from, but we don't have to hold on to that. And so, Jonathan, you were discussing like the detours because we are, we're setting out the year focused on our intentions and what we planned on getting done, and then Terry also had a story about it. But what were you going to say about the intentions and the focus, Jonathan? Well, you can always have, we always have the feeling of what we wanted to focus on for the year, for example. And, you know, coming across meeting, meeting great people, great groups. But at the same time, there, there is, and say, for example, you're driving through places and you see all these, these distractions, these things that are somewhat part of your, your, your focus, but sometimes people will go direct and go into this 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 uh, store for example and then think they need we need to buy majority of these things and the next thing you know we're heavily investing into this space which it you know possibly it could have been a reminder right or a sign that you know you're on the right correct path to 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 what you feel is dear to your heart right um, so in this world we have so many things that you know really will challenge our awareness of, you know, do we fully engage this or do we just observe it and then come back? Is it calling you to come back? And this is kind of like, you know, actually this stone I was telling you about uh, from across the way, I saw it and it, it was so, it was just beautiful, it caught my eye. And, you know, I, I was going through, I was like, oh, I don't normally, take a lot of the stones unless you know I really feel the call and so I left and I went home the other day and then and then it just came back to me and it started you know started 
showing that it was important for a grounding grounding element in the space. Uh, and so when I was going back over it, it was getting more and more and more, I could feel it, right? Uh, so it's really about feeling uh, the engagement and feeling about, okay, not saying you can't detour, but it's observing and maybe it's taking a step back and then just observing, do I, do I, did I get gather all that I needed to gather within this, this, this interaction? Or is it just observing and just moving on, letting go? You, you're, you're in your power of your joy because you're, you're going, moving towards your focus, your prime directive, your, your wisdom. And so all of these other things, these signs are giving us, are these exact that signs to show us that we're actually, you know, on that path. But we must feel into uh, the, the, you know, the choices and feel into the people or the, the connections and, and, you know, really let go. It's, it's, it's always, everything we move forward is a completion or, a release of sorts and acceptance. And it's really about feeling and balancing that and just being joyful in the present moment to be in this experience, you know. It's funny because you're you're talking about a literal story of picking things up, picking things up and putting them down. Uh, my teacher, Hannah Hardy, she said, uh, you know, we need to observe. We don't have to pick everything up. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to pick every, everything up. Every argument, every uh, every mission, every person that comes by that needs saving is not something that you have to personally pick up. I can let these things go. Uh, you know, any type of drama in the world, any every news article, I don't have to pick those things up and carry them as something that I need to fix. Even some of the things inside myself, I can observe them. My mental thoughts that come across, like, am I necessarily really hungry? Am I really, really angry? Am I really, really sad? I can observe even my emotions and I don't have to pick them up. I can move right through them and let them go. Um, so I appreciated that thought. And Terry, you we were talking about travel and distractions, how we can be going down the road on our path. Exactly. We can we can be on we can be on the interstate and we're going from point A to point B. So we could say that this is our prime directive. But gee, we you know what? I need gas and I pull off to the side and all of a sudden I'm get involved in this lovely community and I decide to buy a house in this and all of a sudden I'm involved and, and but there's a, that part of me saying, yeah, but you were supposed to be doing something else. But gee, I like living in, I don't know, Timbuktu, <laughs> but right, it, but, and it's a wonderful place and, and everything else, but there's that calling inside. And so, you know, eventually I'll get back onto the, the, the highway again and I'll be going down and then I can be pulled somewhere else. But each time that you're pulled away, you're pulled from what your soul's really idea was, like this was your, 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 your purpose but we get pulled aside to all these other things that distract us and and you get involved in 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 the in the whirlpool of information that's going on and and this and this and this and 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 but it's a distraction from what we're really meant to be doing and it's not that it's bad it's just a distraction I love it because, you know, if I, if I take a road trip from Florida and I cut through in a small town in, in Texas and, and now I stop there and have a conversation with a guy at the gas station and see, oh, this girl, look at her. She's, 
you know, starting a new yoga studio. And, and then she's like, oh, and then you start meeting people who have something in common and you kind of get drawn into like, oh my God, this is the place to be. But it was like, wait a minute, you were on your way to San Diego. You were going to San Diego. Now you're, now you're, now you're living in this town in Texas. You bought a house and you got a mortgage 20 years later. You're looking back like, how the heck did we end up moving to Texas? Like I was really on a visit to San Diego. So um, that's exact. We, that's exactly it. You you end up in a different in a place where you weren't necessarily planning, and it it's fine. And and you know what, your soul is going to get to your destination eventually. But it's like that's a, a distraction. And now all of a sudden you stuck this beautiful town that you're in. Now you're creating karma be between people because you get involved in I don't know the PTA and 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 the the church and all that. And, you know, it's now a distraction from what you were really meant to be doing or what you would set out to be doing. Right. And and is it's not like you're saying it's not a good or a bad thing, just depending no. though, if you lost your purpose in that, if you lost your focus, if you lost your intentions in these actions. Because um this is another thing we used to do too, because as a direct marketing person. They say, help, help this person get what they want so that you can get what you want. And I stopped doing it because I realized, you know what? I wasn't actually helping people get what they wanted. I was basically help trying to convince people to do things that I wanted them to do so that I could get what I wanted done. And I was thinking that I was helping them get what they wanted, but they did they want an extra job or a business? Did they want extra friends or did they want extra connections? And did they want extra tasks or duties added to their day? You know, and I would just think, you know, the overall picture was actually, no, I'm, I'm really not helping these people. I'm really like trying to convince other people to take up my my sword and shield, like they say, <laughs> taking up my, <laughs> taking up what my mission is and trying to take it on as their own. And so I really stopped with all that because I, I realized I was upsetting a balance of things. Mm -hmm. Right. By convincing people all the time. Right. And, and you get it. Where does, where does the detour, where does that, that, that adventure go? Is it coming from the ego and, and a control aspect of that? Or is it naturally being a pull to feeling into that engagement in that store that is, you know, that is a link to maybe part of your 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 focus. And maybe it was a lesson that you you and that you had to connect with to bring to your your main focus. So that is resonates with your heart. So it's really about feeling the signs and feeling where you go in observing uh what and what you're it, right because it, it doesn't start out as control it started out with intentions just <laughs> like this is gonna be fun it just sounds like a great idea and it doesn't sound you know it doesn't start out as control until you start seeing people pull away and maybe not do what you want or you know or things aren't just kind of going how you your expectations lead now mm -hmm. those expectations yeah, it leads to you down, down, down to this thing where you can't release. So we're just constantly bringing back to the part where we have to kind of just release and reevaluate. And you know what? It made me think about the moon cycles because you're right. We're constantly either releasing or we're constantly pulling something in. So that's just the whole cycle of the moon is, is our cycle of life. Because if you don't uh, create, you dissipate. So you're going to be doing one or the other. Mm -hmm. and, and just going back to the the analogy there of that town in Texas well you know what those people were probably on their way somewhere else maybe they were on their way to Phoenix or maybe they were on their way somewhere else but they got pulled in and so all of a sudden now they're 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 you you've got people in this town but each one of them was actually going somewhere else but they get caught into this almost like a vortex right vortex. and then then they're they're all feeling that they're supposed to be doing something but 
but what is it that they're supposed to be doing? And so they're creating it within this place. But meanwhile, they're really supposed to be on, on another, they're, they just stopped here. They're just on their way to their further journey. But meanwhile, it becomes, this becomes what they're trying to, and, and maybe eventually it'll pull them to where they need to go. But and guess what? And if I had stayed in my car, got my gas, got back in my car, they would have figured it out without me anyway. That's some of, that's some of the, all of these are just the lessons, the lessons. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we get caught up in the karma up? of it, right? Yeah. What are we going to pick up? So I think um, what we'll get started is if somebody needs to pause and get yourself some water and get yourself a candle and your crystal, if you like. This would be a good time to do that. And so we'll just give you a second. Like and you can pause. Yeah, and, and I need a second too. You need a second. <laughs> so I'm gonna literally I'm gonna literally pause then. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Like, whoo, powerful. Um Okay, well, before we get to get us started, I'm going to go ahead and light my candle to commence. Any instructions? Um, if you have, um, you don't have to do this right now. You can always do, but if you have a piece of paper and a pen, um, you can always um, do some writing here. Um, but this is, this meditation was just going to, it's meant to sort of take you into your, into your center and uh, do some contemplation. This is my so pH whenever. water. <laughs> just, just so people don't know, people, or so they don't think I had a Bud Light or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> okay, it's not a Bud Light. It's alkaline. Same color though. <laughs> okay. Okay, so when we're ready, um, Jonathan, we can just start maybe with just some breathing. Okay. So just closing your eyes, just take a nice cleansing breath. Now we're just gonna take a nice, few deep breaths of, of uh, focusing on your feet and inhaling your flow all the way to your stomach and to your head. Exhaling back down. As we become the wave of wisdom and water allowing and priming our bodies to release and move. We take three breaths within to our heart space for three. We hold for three and we exhale for three. Bring your awareness back to your heart, inhaling, and pausing for three, feeling your entire body as one, exhaling, allowing it to flow through you out and around. Inhale. Now from your head to your Feet, exhale. Just observe how you feel in this present moment. How you flow, you're cycling, moving like a river, like a body of water ocean, 
within every cell is here and now present, not on any detours, just here and now. Enjoy the journey. Now, just tap at your heart space. And bring your awareness into your heart. And as you bring your awareness to this space, you see a tiny golden light in your heart. And you just invite that light to open up within your heart. And filling your heart with the golden light, allowing that golden light to spill into your physical body, all of the cells in your body become the golden light. And that spills in to the area around you, your aura. And that fills with the golden light. And you're floating within this golden light. And bringing your awareness to this past year. Just allow yourself to just observe the year that is coming to a close. The people who may have been part of your life that have now transitioned Acknowledging them, allowing them to move freely to their next journey, sending them with love and honor, and thanking them for sharing aspects of their life with the aspects of your life. And now looking at the relationships that we've had with the last year, honoring all of those relationships without judgment. releasing them without any binds or ties, honoring their journey. And realizing that we are each on our own unique journey. No one journey is more important than another. Our soul chooses the path that we take. And our free will offers us experiences. We honor the experiences. As we move forward,
along our path. And now we're going to bring our awareness back to our heart center. Bringing our awareness back to our present moment. And now take the time to sit down with your pen and paper and contemplate these past few months, the changes that have occurred in your life and allow them to pass through without anchoring into them. You may take some time just to talk to your higher self. You may want to write that down. You may release those people that you grieve for, the situations. Just contemplate what it is you're ready to let go of. And if you so choose at the end of this time of contemplation, you can take that paper and release it through the element of fire. Or you can just hold on to it until you're ready to finally let it go. Whatever you feel is the appropriate for the time. So we're going to just bring our awareness back into the room now and just spend a few moments in contemplation. So take a deep breath in and release, open your eyes and spend some time in contemplation in that quiet place.
Oh, I was wondering how I got stuff on me. <laughs> Did we have any words? Pardon? Do we have any words? I, I think that this is a, this is a meditation that we just need to go inside, just connect with the heart. You know, we, we did a guided here, but it's just a matter of sitting and, and it's a process. I think this time of the, at the end of the year, it's a time of reflection. And so the contemplation, the reflection, just what are you ready to just release without judgment? honor it and just let it go right let it go you you, you know as i said you can uh, you, people can um write it down they can um then if they want to they can burn it but it's important to not hang on to it it's the past and just honor honor the people honor everybody's journey everyone's journey is unique it's one's not better than the other um, you know, the ego sometimes gets in the way, <laughs> but everybody's journey is just as important. We're all part of the source, experiencing it differently. The hand is the hand is going to experience something differently than the foot is, so we just honor it that way. Yes, um, you know it, it's exactly that. It's just being that river and letting it, def letting the, the elements to flow down to cleanse, you know, to really let it bypass and just being in the heart and being that observer, right? You know, I, I, as we were doing it, um, it was like when we sat down and we were holding space for to write to contemplate. It's just like, ah. Huh, how much is there to write? And it's just like, like a flash flood of download of, of the visuals of all of, of everything that I've learned and, and explored that's been connected with my, my family and stuff. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it was right on point and just allow it, observe it and exactly that, honor it. And it's, you are not my energy. It is just on the passing through, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think we'll end it here if we don't have any more words to share. And, and your final words, Erica? Um, I know this. I opened my eyes and I felt comfortable being where I was. I am at home. Because I feel like I've been trying to figure some things out and, and really about to make some changes and move and take a trip and was in sort of a panic and not really feeling like I had a lot of time, not really feeling like I had my thoughts together. Because there were so many outside thoughts. And this just brought me back to being at peace with being at home. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the more than one sense of the word. I'm at home, I'm at peace. I'm where I need to be at all times. Empower, empowering your present moment within, yeah. within the here and now, right? And this is where we come back to some of the stuff like we said before. It's, I mean, it's the fun, there's feng shui within our space. And this is about, we come back to the, the full moons and, and the new moons. Like we always have to shift things to, to allow our space to vibrate to where we kind of want to be or feel we need to be, right? 
And when you do that, that also will, it's a mirroring effect. We're always mirroring around to uh, to our environment and to all that are part of our environment. You know. And yet we just have to observe the flow of information, observe what we feel, and know when to to let go. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So I would say we start by saying good morning, but I would say good night. Good night. <laughs> good, night. good day. Grand rising. And happy new year. Happy new year.